Hey guys, this is a really fast video showing you how to fix 99% of problems with the Ford 7.3 liter diesel power stroke engine, or in the case of the International 3800, also known as a T444E. This guy was giving trouble on the way back from Colorado to Michigan. It was running rough a lot, but then it started uh, dying on the road and not starting. The first thing I did was pick up a computer. This is a scan gauge I got on Amazon for a hundred and something bucks. It not only gives you voltage and oil pressure readings, but it also will scan and tell you what codes you're having. So I got codes that were reading for the ICP, injection control pressure, and the EOP, engine oil pressure. Now if you look online, there are really only a handful of issues that go wrong with this engine. So you can pretty much start narrowing it down even if you don't have the computer, but it's definitely helpful to get one. So I started with that, got those two. And the first thing that you might want to look at, with those codes anyway, is the injection control pressure. Now this is interfacing with the oil from the high pressure oil side directly into the engine, and I was getting an out of range low fault, which means it could be a short. With wiring like this, you are likely to find a short that might fix a lot of your problems if you get it out of there and rewire it. This is a 1999 and so some of the fraying on the wires might cause issues or, or shorts. Um, short is basically when the two wires touch or you have voltage that hits ground or the chassis causing the ECM or the control, basically it's the engine computer, to act differently because it thinks something's up. So anyway, let's go back to this. Uh, you can find a new ICP sensor on eBay for about 60 bucks. You can go to the international dealer for some things, or a Ford dealer for some things, but they generally charge you a lot. I went just to pick up a cam position sensor, which is another culprit with these 7.3 liter diesel engines. Uh, while you're there, you might as well pick up an oil filter if you want. And then uh, I got this guy on Amazon. This is the fuel water separator, but you can also get it um, on, you know, at the dealer or anywhere else. Um, and if you don't have the right tool to change it, it can end up looking like this. So make sure to pick up a either an oil, oil filter ranch or something a little bit more suited to the job. Um, I got this on Amazon, it actually didn't work that well either. But nonetheless, you can get it off and it shouldn't be too tight. They're only supposed to put it three quarters of a turn past hand crank. Uh, other parts you can pick up online that will fix common issues are this glow plug solenoid relay, which is about $18. The more expensive part is the injection pressure regulator valve. This is an electromagnetic solenoid that basically looks at the oil and controls how much is going into the engine. Now this is directly kind of tied with that ICP sensor that we were talking about. Um, so it's a little bit cheaper to check on this guy first. This is the old cam position sensor. Uh, and a lot of people like to keep a spare because this is one of the most common problems in this engine type. Uh, that's pretty much it for these parts. Um, now let me just show you real quick how to do all this. The ICP is pretty easy to replace, but before you replace anything, it's best to obviously check all the wires and all the connections. You want to do this with a multimeter, voltmeter, and you can pick one up for free at some stores like Harbor Freight, or for a couple dollars at pretty much any other store that carries lots of things, like a Walmart or a Target or a Harbor Freight or Auto Tools, etc. Um, AutoZone. So you just set it to voltage and you want to basically check to make sure that the voltage is consistent across different lines. You can visually check to make sure that there are no corroded wires, no wires touching, that oil hasn't burned through and is causing two wires to touch each other. So it's a little bit tricky with this engine because there's a bunch of wires going all over the place, but you can pull out a lot of these sensors and just kind of visually look at them to see if there's anything wrong in there. And then you can actually check the sensor itself. There's a range of acceptable voltages for the different pins. Usually there's two or three pins, and the voltage should be somewhere around zero for one of them, uh, less than one or two volts for another, and then I think it's about five. But if you Google it for your particular sensor, you can find out if you have a bad sensor or if it's more likely the wiring. If you have a bad sensor, simply pop off the wire, stick a socket over there, take it out, put it back in. That's for the ICP anyway. The camshaft position sensor, CPS, is in the front of the engine here between these belts along the pulleys. In this engine, it's under the coolant uh, sensor, which is more easily accessible. And for this guy, you gotta get a flashlight really to look in there. And I was using an extended wrench and even a channel lock to hold it in place as I got it out. Uh, with the camshaft position sensor, it's pretty simple. 
simple to do. There's one bolt holding this metal clip on. You undo that bolt and then pry out uh, the actual sensor with like a pry bar or if you're really strong, your hands. In terms of uh, other issues, I was actually reading zero fuel pressure, which is one of the things we decided to check because we were getting a no start. Picked up this at uh, uh, O'Reilly. Uh, it's, you can get one on Amazon for about 30 bucks. And fortunately with this engine, there is a valve, a Schrader valve, right next to the fuel filter where you can get a reading. Unfortunately, we were getting a reading of zero, uh, even while cranking. So that was kind of tricky. But what I found out is you can get pressure both um, from one side, from the pump side, and from the injector side, from the engine side, uh, giving you a zero reading. But I think also having some other issues can cause the reading to be zero. So yeah, some of the first things would be to obviously change the fuel filter, which you just unscrew this guy, take it out, put a new one in, change the fuel water separator, which you unscrew this guy, take off the connectors in the bottom up first, catch all the stuff that drips down, fill it back up, and then put in a new one. Uh, other things you can check if you think it's a fuel problem is unscrewing these two bolts. I think they're 10 millimeters. And then you can pull this fuel pressure regulator uh, uh, front side off. And there's a little screen in here that you can check to see if it's clogged. Another one is in here, there's this cylindrical kind of little uh, 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 guy that looks like a mini fuel filter and that's kind of what it is a pre-screen filter and sometimes those can get clogged the glow plug solenoid relay i showed you earlier is right here and that can cause a no start and i've been told by mechanics that these guys tend to go bad and sometimes you pop a new one in and uh, truck is fixed you can probably get away with just cleaning all the terminals um, but be careful because this guy is hot and you're going to want to disconnect the battery first speaking of which if you're tr cranking a lot and not able to start the vehicle you should probably charge the batteries uh, to make sure that that's not causing an issue. I have it hooked up to this also 1999 vehicle. Uh, it works a little bit better when you use the same year vehicle. I'm just kidding, but you want to just plug it in and uh, make sure it's 12 volts, 12 volt, and it will keep your batteries charged. So in terms of the other things you might want to do is if you're getting something wrong with the ICP or the IPR and you've uh, narrowed it down past the sensor, past the wiring, to actually not being able to build oil pressure due to one of those codes. Um, or if you're having similar symptoms to me, no start, fuel reading zero, uh, it was running rough before. Uh, one of the common things with this engine is a stuck injection pressure regulator. Um, and that's that IPR I was showing you earlier. Now it, it's about $140 on eBay, um, that's the one I bought and it got good reviews. When it's in the engine, it looks like this with this cap on it. And you can see this gold solenoid or you can see this uh, nut at the back. But basically it's near that ICP sensor on the driver's side in front of the engine. And you can follow these wires, uh, the ones that go to the ICP. If you trace them back and then go down into the V here, you'll see the ICP in here. And basically the easiest way to get to that is to use bungees to pull as many cables away as you can. I unscrewed the ICP, I unscrewed this fuel line and uh, a couple other of the sensors. And then you can get to it. However, you can't use your standard wrench because it's so tight. The only one I found that uh, would fit was actually from Harbor Freight Tools. And it's this front wheel drive lock nut set. And this is a 29 millimeter deep set socket. It's a half inch, so you have to buy an adapter if you don't have a half inch wrench. Um, and this actually finally got on there and would take it off. So really to take it off, all you do is you unplug the wire going to uh, the, the solenoid. Then you unscrew this end nut, pull off the spacer, pull off the solenoid, and then you put your wrench over this guy and unscrew it and pull it out. You want to put paper towels down first because some of the uh, high pressure oil pump oil will drain out in there. After you replace it, you plug every, you put, do the exact reverse order, plug it back in. And uh, if you want, you can try to fill some of that reservoir of uh, that about quarter oil that you spilled. Um, I think you can probably do it from uh, this ICP sensor because uh, oil is right in there. Um, or you might have a uh, 
a release valve on the top of your pump or over here somewhere. Um, but that shouldn't be a big deal uh, because it is able to take oil from the rest of the system. So just check your oil level and refill it. Uh, you're going to want to pick up some 5W40. And you're also going to want to pick up some diesel gas, uh, some diesel fuel um, for when you replace this guy if you're doing all of your shopping now. So once you get the oil fill, um, it would continuously go down while cranking, um, and then uh, finally it steadied out. So make sure you got enough oil um, moving forward. But once you do the fuel filter, if you have a fuel water separator, fuel water separator, the camshaft position sensor in here, that ICP sensor, uh, the IPR injection pressure regulator, uh, you are probably going to be done. Um, that is pretty much everything that generally goes wrong with these guys. Um, and you can fix it and buy all of the parts you need for pretty much less than the cost of towing it and a one hour inspection at most truck shops. So hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.